an organization that came in to us, they were very surprised the amount of information their insurance broker had about them. And they hadn't provided any access. They hadn't asked for a penetration test, internal, external. They hadn't asked for a vulnerability scan. They hadn't given any access or any credentials. Their insurance brokers had all this information on them. The reason they had all this information on them was because they were doing a due diligence assessment of the organization that they were going to issue insurance to. And they did a scan from the internet and did a reputational analysis from the outside. And a lot of people don't realize, but your dirty laundry, your cybersecurity and your IT hygiene is out there. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Incident Report presented by Quest Technology Management. I'm Paul Burke, Director of Technology Communications. Every week, I'm joined by VP of Sales and Partnerships, Adam Burke. The Incident Report brings you conversations with thought leaders, business innovators, and channel mavericks to help you stay productive and agile in a changing technology landscape. Hey, everybody, welcome to the Incident Report. This is episode 41. Adam, I went back and tallied all of them. We're up to 41. How are you doing? Good, Paul. Excited for our 41st episode coming up on the Christmas holiday. It is, you know, December 21st when we're recording this. So fully in the swing of Christmas season. Hope everyone's having a great season. Got the kiddos home from school, so partially going insane there, but doing good. <laughs> oh, what are your thoughts on Christmas Carol? Are you talking like the, like the traditional Christmas Carol? I'm talking like, classic, like, Adam. I'm talking Ebenezer Scrooge Christmas Carol. Funny you should mention it. We watched the Muppets version of that last night with the kids. But um, yeah, you know, it's good. It's a classic. Why do, you, why do you ask? Because the article I found today deals with the past, present, and future of the channel. And I thought maybe we could take this and tie it in to a Christmas Carol and theme this episode. You're going to play the role of Adam Neesner Scrooge. And you will be visited by three ghosts that will talk about the challenges facing the channel in the past, present, and future. And what you, Adam Burke, might do to combat these issues. That sounds good. I think Christmas Carol, Ebenezer Scrooge, was taught some lessons through the visiting of the ghosts. So I'm not sure how much I'm going to share as far as knowing necessarily the answers here, but would love to share you know, our thoughts on some of these challenges, how they've been dealt with previously how you know we're currently handling them, how we're seeing our peers and our partners handle them, and then maybe some thoughts about you know ways to address them in the future for sure. Yeah, looking forward to it. Prepare yourself. You're about to be visited by the first ghost. Ooh, Adam. It's me, the ghost of Channel Past. Recession is on the horizon. What do you think of that? How could somebody adapt in the channel to recession on the horizon? So Bill Brenner is the channel E to E gentleman who wrote this article. And I think he'd appreciate your narration or not your narration. I'm sorry, the ghost narration of that. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I left really quickly. So I didn't even get to visit the ghosts, but that's great to know that it's very believable. So let's dive in. So a December, 2022 IT glue article recommended five areas for MSPs to focus on. Managing cash flow, building an agile workforce, investing in the right technology, seizing opportunities, and riding the recession wave. What are you thinking about those? Which ones would you lean into to deal with this recession? Well, the recession's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting. Not quite sure how big, deep, or long it's gonna go. We're seeing things, large telecom, national providers that everyone's aware of. We're seeing them go through layoffs right now. I believe 24,000 people were laid off from one of the nationals. If that's not public, it will be public pretty soon. There's billions of dollars in debt overhang that people are going to try to refinance with higher interest rates. So a lot of the zombie companies out there that have high debt that need to refinance it are going to be in. So managing cash flow, number one there, is going to be critical for surviving and thriving in, in a recession environment. And giving your customers financial options on how to consume technology, I think is critical. Number five around, you know, season opportunities, that's, yep, that's probably always a good thing to do. Uh, investing in the right technology, yep, that's probably always the right thing to do. But I think number one, two, and five are kind of discipline, more of a discipline kind of concept, right? Building the agile workforce, absolutely critical. People are working from 
everywhere and being able to scale that quickly and help clients quickly uh, is critical. We built out a program, we've been building out for about the last 12 years that allows us to dispatch, deploy and manage on-site as well as remote support services for clients internationally. A little bit of our secret sauce on how we deliver on-call support internationally for folks. It's not an overnight success. It's taken folks from our staffing and our, our placement and recruiting teams 12 years to build that workforce. So not that we're excited about a recession, but that number five, riding the recession wave, it does force people and any MSP or any of our partners that are listening to this, it does force people to take another look at how they're consuming technology. Mm. When everyone's fat, dumb, and happy and throwing cash around and the cost of capital is near zero, there's not a lot of discipline about how you consume or how you purchase or how you, you know, how you take orders as a salesperson. Paul, you and I are of a generation, we kind of came out of college right during the great recession and the huge financial collapse of 2007 through 2009. And then the cost of money from 2010 to really back in 2019, when the Fed first started tightening, money was free, money was cheap. Cost of borrowing was zero. So we have an entire sales force that's been raised the market taking orders, mm. just taking orders and not really worrying about cash flow or um, cost of capital. That's going to change significantly next year. So um, having the ability to deliver technology in different ways, sub subscription based, having good financial instruments to deliver it as a service, huge opportunity if you have those mechanics in place. Okay, so clearly this first ghost did not throw you off. You are prepared for recession and have ideas to tackle a solution. But Adam, will you be visited by another ghost? Let's find out. Sounds good. Ooh, Adam, it's me. The second ghost visiting you, critical infrastructure threatened like never before. Adam, Microsoft painted the picture in a recent post report. I'm going to have to hold on to this voice a little bit longer. 40 billion devices will be connected to the internet by 2025. Ooh, gotta go. All right, Adam, I was uh, just came back in. What yep. happened? It appears a second ghost has visited. Yes, and it was, it was it, he or she, or I'm not sure what the ghost identifies as, but was talking about critical infrastructure. So, and yeah, 40 billion devices being connected to the internet and people use, you know, the marketing term internet of things, operational technology, you know, smart devices, all those types of services. Those, every device, like we've talked about in the past, Paul, every convenience could be a potential threat. Right. Mm -hmm. So as you connect your home thermostat, as you connect your ability to lock your door remotely or start your car remotely or, you know, act, have people work from home and connect into your critical infrastructure through a cloud broker or a, if you're leveraging SASE architecture, all good stuff. But every point of connection could be a potential area of breach and of threat. The article suggests perform a risk analysis on critical assets. Focus on the business impact of different attack scenarios as suggested by MITRE, which stands for something, but I'm not sure what it is. Those are the uh, very well-funded and well-paid, and I'm not disparaging their competence in any way, MITRE consultants. Those are government-funded smart people who sit around and think about things and write things like white papers about what the IT industry is doing. So I had the pleasure of my second year presenting in front of about 45 MITRE consultants for the Department of Energy on a private cloud proposal back in 2011. And let's just say being a second year sales <laughs> presenting in front of 30, I think it was 35 or 40 MITRE consultants who've been in the industry for 40 plus years on average, didn't go well. Didn't go well, Paul, but learned a lot from it and uh, dusted myself off. That was fun. So yeah, I got a little bit of history with the MITRE folks. There's gonna be a lot connected. Doing a risk assessment is a great idea. Business impact, great idea. Basically what happens when something happens, how can the business react to it? Very similar discipline that we have in disaster recovery and business continuity planning. So, you know, this is past, present and future again, right? It's the same, it's the same kind of concept, same kind of discipline, walking on the path there. You gotta know where you're at, know what you're dealing with, but with the internet of things, 
knowing where you are and knowing where the threats are is just is expanding. It's expanding to a lot of different areas and you have to be realistic about that. So great advice from the MITRE folks as far as, you know, doing a risk assessment and understanding where potential threats could be coming from. I'm a curious fellow. Would this mm -hmm. impact business cybersecurity insurance? Oh, it's going to. And people who are going through that right now are feeling that, right? So you're seeing coverage getting slashed in half and premiums going up by, you know, three to four X for half the coverage. You're seeing people not being able to renew their coverage because they don't have certain things enabled. We had this situation from an organization that came in to us. They were very surprised the amount of information their insurance broker had about them. And they hadn't provided any access. They hadn't provided, you know, hey, they hadn't asked for a penetration test, internal, external. They hadn't ha asked for a vulnerability scan. They hadn't given any access or any credentials, but somehow this was news to them, the news to the potential client who was talking to us that their insurance brokers had all this information on them. The reason they had all this information on them was because they were doing a due diligence assessment of the organization that they were going to issue insurance to. And they did a scan from the internet and did a reputational analysis from the outside. And a lot of people don't realize, but your dirty laundry, your cybersecurity and your IT hygiene um, is out there. All right. So let's imagine you're about to do business with someone to come over and help you out with something from a, a business relationship standpoint. And you drive by their house and their lawn is a complete mess. There's kids running around unsupervised. There's random sharp tools hanging out in a garage with the door up and the gun safe is unlocked, right? I mean, do you, are you going to do business with that dude? I don't know. I might take a second look like, hey, am I really going to have this person come over and yeah. <laughs> help me run my systems when I just... So that's what, that's what's happening for folks who are leveraging software applications online. So subscribing to different software. You can see who people are working with and you can see how they're patching their systems. You can see what versions they're on. You can scan all of that without the person even knowing. It's reputational analysis. It's, it's table stakes now for anyone who's doing business with other people who have an IT footprint. Can businesses get help running a test for themselves in reputation analysis? Oh yeah, yeah, there's, there's lots of tools out there that okay. can do it. We do it, on, we do it as a service or we do it as a one-time offering. And then what it also does is it stacks ranks you, it stack ranks you by, based on your vertical. So if you're mm -hmm. a healthcare provider, financial services person in the manufacturing industry, it stack ranks you against your competitors. So you can mm -hmm. see like this hospital group has this score or this bank or this credit union has this score. Mm -hmm. And here's where they're, you, anyone can see it. It's public. It's it, and a lot of people don't realize that, you know, you, you can see all of that and you can also see where it gets a little creepy, but it's very, it's all out there and a lot of people don't know it. You can see people's compromised emails. You can see people's compromised credentials. You can see where people have logged in and used their email. You can go to the leader of a banking institution or a group like that and map that person's private emails to their corporate email and associate them based on where they come from. I mean, there's all sorts of creepy stuff out there in the dark web that you can know a lot about people. And people are trying to get cyber insurance, Paul, to your point. I don't think, sometimes they just don't think like, well, no one's gonna check my logged events or no one's gonna check what actually what we actually did from a patching standpoint. No, there's people out there looking. It's cost the insurance industry billions of dollars and cyber crime is a big deal. Okay, so it sounds like you know how to deal with critical infrastructure in 2023, but Will a third ghost, Adam, have the challenge you cannot overcome? We're going to find out soon. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not in control of these ghosts. Ooh, Adam, it's me, the third ghost. But pay attention. I'm also important. Commercialization of Cybertrime continues. The second ghost kind of stole a lot of my thunder mentioning internet of things, but I'm important. Listen, Adam, you may not know, but 167% rise in data breaches from Q2 to Q3 in 2022. It's only going to increase. Adam, what do you think about this? Gotta go. <laughs> These ghosts are sounding less impressive as we go on. They are. They're, they're sounding a little bit less like ghosts and more like some cartoon character from the 1980s that I can't reference right now. But yeah, <laughs> commercialization of cybercrime, absolutely. 
The third ghost of, of the future, absolutely right there. There's continued data breaches going on. We saw a big spike from Q2 to Q3, 167% rise just last year. But there is help. There are ways to stay in front of it, but you have to kind of be realistic as an MSP, as a partner, or as an end user and a consumer. You just have to know, okay, it's, it, this is a business. There are people who are actively trying to take what you have, right? So you got to be realistic about that. They want to they want to hold your data for ransom. They want to basically steal from you, mm -hmm. and it's organized crime and it's well funded. So you know consistently maintaining, you know, updating your patches and maintaining a security awareness program and helping to protect sensitive data by policy-based access control, multi-factor authentication, talking with someone who's been there before. Don't really worry about the brands, right? So this was, this called out a Sophos threat report from 2023. You know, Sophos is a great cybersecurity company. They have products, but there are tons of great products out there. Don't get sucked down into a product conversation. We see a lot of partners and a lot of clients sometimes get pulled into a specific product conversation, mm. but they forget to kind of have the business outcome discussion. So what do you really want to do at the end of the day is you want to prevent breaches. And in the event of something breaches, you want to minimize the risk. So we've been doing that. We talked about it last time, our cybersecurity checkups. That's just good hygiene, taking a look at where you're at and then looking for areas of improvement and looking for potential vulnerabilities or potential areas where you can, you know, get into a little bit of trouble. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, it's not a set and forget type of a model, but you also don't have to, you know, mortgage the house to pay for cybersecurity. It's not that, um, Per pervasive where you have to change everything, but you do have to be aware of it. And I think, you know, the commercialization of cybercrime is going to continue as long as people make money doing it. And we definitely didn't see a slowdown last year. I'm betting we probably saw a double if you look at the entire year. I know we, the data here says 167% increase Q2 to Q3, but I bet annually there was almost twice as many data breaches over the entire year. Wow. So getting with someone who can help with the detection and response and knowing you know, where your potential vulnerabilities are, critical. Well, Adam, you did it. You overcame the three ghosts, past, present, and future. No challenge they threw out. Did you say, I can't solve? I don't have an idea. I don't have a solution. You were able to tackle them all. Very impressive. Very exciting. I, I like this article. I think anyone who you know wants to talk more about it or if there's any questions about if we missed some challenges that are coming up in 2023, shoot us a note. Send us some input. If you'd like to join us on, on the podcast or hop in and chat with us, we'd love to talk to you. Coming up in 2023, we're excited about it. We're going to continue to hop on here every week and chat about things. So, Absolutely. That raises a great point. We are excited about 2023, bringing you more insight and bringing you more guests. So we're excited about that coming up in 2023. Adam, happy holidays. Have a great week. Have a great Christmas. Everybody listening. We hope you have an amazing week as well, and happy holidays to you. Yeah, Merry Christmas, and appreciate you listening, and we look forward to any input or, or comments you have. So We have are great, so uh, great at wrapping this up. <laughs> one more time. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for listening. The Incident Report is brought to you by Quest Technology Management. With over 40 years of experience, Quest is a leading technology integrator working seamlessly with your staff and systems to achieve your IT goals. Learn more about everything they do at questsys.com. And if you have questions or suggestions for the podcast, you can always email Adam and myself at theincidentreport at questsys.com. We hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time.